This video is going to show you a few things related to your puzzle cube assembly. First thing that I want to stress is your file management. So if you look at um, what I've got pulled up here, this would be what you could see when you enter your Z drive. And obviously you would go to your folder that I have created for you. We made an inventor practice folder already. So if I go in there, um, this is an example of what I do not want to see. I don't want to see all of these parts just randomly in space. Um, I also don't even particularly want them in the inventor practice folder. I would prefer to have them in their own individual folder. So I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to go back to my original um, folder, my student folder. I'm going to create a new folder. I could also right click and say new folder. Name that the puzzle cube. All right. And go back into where I have this stuff saved. This old versions um, is a folder that Inventor creates when I open these files up and, and, and make changes. So I'll go ahead and take it with me as well, but it's really not needed. So I highlight them all. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say cut. I'm going to go back to my Puzzle Cube folder and paste them in there. So what this does is this puts all of our files um, in the same folder which Inventor is going to need to have happen. Second thing I want to make sure is that they are named something appropriate. So I named them simply the color um, that I was creating them as. So black, blue, green, red, yellow. So I don't plan on changing the names. I now no longer plan on changing the file pass. I can go ahead and start creating um, my assembly. One thing I was going to show you is how to create the parts to be a particular color. All right, so right now, this is just a generic part. It needs to be yellow. Up across my quick access toolbar, there's these two drop down bars. This first one physically changes the material. Um, so I can get some appearances out of that. I would prefer you to use um, the second drop down bar. And this just changes, again, the appearance of the color. So I'm actually going to type um, yellow rather quickly and it, it does find it. Something else, if you're looking for a color that doesn't exist, you might look under the smooth category because for whatever reason there are um, a number of colors listed under, under smooth. So I'll just use that smooth yellow and I will save it real quick. And now all my parts are the color they need to be. So when I go to new, whether I go to the I and click new I'm going to go to assembly, or if I click new and I get to this part, standard IAM is our assembly file. Okay, so I'll go ahead and open one of those. And notice the interface doesn't look that much different. I've got my workspace, I got my view cube, I got my browser, etc. But my ribbon and the tabs and the tools that I have available do differ from what I would see in an IPT. So before we can start working with our assembly, we do have to place our parts, all right? If for whatever reason yours says, you know, place from content center or place iLogic component or one of these other guys, just click that little black arrow and I simply want the place command, all right? So this is actually a different example. So I've got to go to my Z drive. I got to go to the folder that I was working out of, all right? And this is where I want to pull those parts from. So I'm going to simply go in the order that um, they're listed. And this just happens to be alphabetical order. If you named your parts like part one black or part two blue, go in that order where um, it's named uh, by the number. So I'm going to double click on black. So it's showing me a front view of the black part. And notice that the part is kind of locked my cursor. If I move my mouse, it's moving the part with it. I simply left click and that places the part. Inventor has changed to an isometric view, but if I move my mouse, notice that I um, have another um, black part still linked to my cursor. When we do additional um, assemblies, for example, our solar car, the solar car is going to have four wheels. I don't need to make four IPTs 
I simply need to place multiple wheels. For our puzzle cube, we simply need one of each part. So I'm going to right click and say OK. I could additionally hit escape on the keyboard, um, or I could just go straight back up to the place command and place my next part. Okay. So I, particularly for the puzzle cube, generally place all of my parts to start. And I just kind of move the ones out of the way. So I'm just clicking and, and holding. I just move the ones out of the way that I'm not going to be using right now. So if you notice in your browser, um, it's, it's tracked the parts that you've placed. Okay, if you notice this yellow oblique cube, that is the um, visual graphic inventor uses as a part. So I could actually place a, another assembly into this assembly and use sub-assemblies, etc. But we'll get to that later on. So right now all of our parts are completely free. They can move left to right, up, down, forward and back or whatever. What I have to do is I have to ground one of the parts and lock it in place before um, I build my assembly. I tend to lock my first part in place. So I'm going to right click on my first part here. I could additionally right click on it in the workspace, but I'm specifically looking for the grounded um, tool, command, whatever. And I'm just going to click it. Notice it adds a thumbnail over the, the graphic. And now that part's locked in place. I can't move it. It's, it's, it is where it is. So the only other command you need to know for building your assembly is the constraint command. We're going to constrain our other parts to that black part, to our grounded part, and, and get it to be where everything is, is locked in place instead of um, free to move. So I'm going to click on my constraint tool. A toolbar pops up. All right, and I'm going to let you know for our Puzzle Cube project, the only thing we're going to manipulate in this toolbar is whether we're going to do what's called a mate constraint or a flush constraint. A mate constraint allows me to click on two planes, two surfaces, um, and it's going to make those surfaces touch. So for example here, um, I know that this cube or this plane has to touch this plane of my blue part. And notice that it, it, it applies that constraint and allows you to see it. If it looks good, I'm not concerned by the fact that it's raised here, um, but if it looks like it did what it was supposed to do, which it did, I'm going to hit apply. And now if I look at this constraint, my blue part can no longer move left to right because that face, which we're seeing in the front view perspective, and this face are locked in place. So each part is going to need three constraints. You're going to have to lock it left to right, up and down, and uh, forward and back. So another constraint, unlike or similar to the mate constraint but slightly different, is the flush constraint. I'm still choosing two surfaces, but instead of those two surfaces touching each other, uh, they're laid on the same flat plane. So if you notice here, um, what it did was it brought that blue part down so that the tops of the part are on the same flat edge. That's exactly what I want, so I'm going to apply it. And now if I look at this, um, it's hard to see, but if I look at it from the front view perspective, it appears as if it cannot move. It cannot move left to right. It can't move up and down. Um, but if I look at the right view perspective, I can still move forward and back. And so that's where my third constraint comes into play. Um, I'm going to use just a make constraint. And I know that this touches that. And so once I do those three constraints, all of those are locked into place and they're good to go. Now, um, I'm going to try to show you kind of an error, I guess, that you might experience. So, for example, I know that uh, the right side of this part is flush with the right side of my blue part. And I know that it did it correctly. I don't have to verify. Okay. 
Um, but right now, I have locked this yellow part to my other ones. It cannot move left to right anymore. Okay? If I were to come in and try to place another constraint, locking this part in the left to right direction, and I hit apply, I'm going to get this error message. And what that error message means is that I'm trying to break a constraint that I've already... I already have that constraint applied and to, to place the one that I just tried to place would break that original one that I had. So I hit cancel, it did not apply that constraint, okay? Um, but what I'll show you here is if you do something wrong, right? If you apply the wrong constraint, this yellow constraint in my browser, it shows that constraint that I placed and I can right click on it, I can delete it, and if that second one I tried to do, which was the incorrect one, uh, was what I needed, okay, and that actually shows you mate versus flush, uh, I can just delete that original constraint and apply it. But obviously that's not the one I want. If I were doing this, I would want the outsides to be flush. I would want the top of this part to touch the bottom of my blue part and I would want the backs to be flush. Okay, so I'm gonna really quickly finish this puzzle cube and then just show you that um, your goal is that you're completely locking all of this stuff in place. And you'll notice I'm a pretty big fan of the flush versus the mate, simply because I feel like I can um, do most of that assembly without um, having to click on my view cube and see different edges. But if you notice, if I try moving any of my parts, all right, they can't. If I were to go back to my black part and unground it, okay, that whole cube moves together. And that's, that's what we want out of our um, assembly. So as you're building your puzzle cube assembly, refer back to this video often. But again, you're really only using whether a uh, mate constraint or a flush constraint. And it's whether or not you need surfaces to touch each other or simply be on uh, the same plane. So that's your instruction on assembly. If you run into issues, get help from somebody or refer back to this video. Thank you.